So greetings to all. This is Vivek Agrawal, and today we have Commodore Ranjit Rai with us. Uh, so thank you for your time. And uh, just for the viewers, uh, Commodore Ranjit Rai has written a book on the 71 war and has been a part of the periphery. So, so it's an honor and a pleasure to have you here with us in this interview. So I would request you to kindly let the viewers know what exactly happened in the 70 war and how do you look at it? It's an absolute pleasure to tell you because in the annals of history, as the Indian Navy is rising on the canvas of the world and being respected, it is the 1971 war which sowed the seeds for what the Navy is today. The missile action, the intelligence action, the information warfare to confuse Pakistan and the world that the Vikrant is off Vishakapatnam, but actually it was off the Andamans working up. It is also in the annals of Indian history, the beginning of missile warfare on land from the sea. It is also in the annals of Indian history and for the world that it is the daring and unless in war you take some risks, you will have no gains. So uh, talking about the 1970 war, it's years ago, I'm well retired, but it is still, as they say, there is salt in every man's veins which you can't take away. You can take them away from the Navy, but the salt remains and the Indian Navy is salt. With those of us who were part of the 1971 war 52 years ago, it still reverberates in our mind. So very happy to answer any question and tell you about that war in the manner you think best. So, so, for starters, we could just go ahead. How do you look at the war and what was the entire experience? How did it start it? And what was your prominent role in that entire scenario? A very good question. The nation should hear that in 1965, there was a war. And unfortunately, Lal Bahadur Shastri, his intelligence boss and the cabinet did not know how to use the Navy. They'd never done it before. And therefore, they thought it was an army war. Suddenly, they called in the Air Force. Air Chief Marshal, later Marshal of the Air Force, Arjun Singh, responded within hours and sent hunters. We lost them. So when Navy tried and Admiral Soman tried, I'd been his flag lieutenant, please let me take part in the war. He was first snubbed by Mr. Sareen, Joint Secretary, then by the Defence Secretary, and when he went to the Defence Minister, he said, sorry, it's a cabinet decision. And yes, we are apolitical, a cabinet decision. He asked for an appointment with the Prime Minister, but unfortunately, uh, the war got over. And therefore, Admiral Nanda, who was a rear admiral at that time, right. was very upset. And he said, if war comes to our doorstep again, we will go to Karachi. So therefore, that is history that the war did come to our doorstep. General Manik Shaw, later Field Marshal Manik Shaw, who I interviewed in uh, Kunur, did tell the Prime Minister that in March we were not ready. The services were not joined and the monsoons were coming. Anyway, it was used politically also to tell the opposition the military is not ready. And they also have a point that Mrs. Gandhi had to tell the country I'm not ready for war. She can't say it politically. So she used Field Marshal Manik Shaw's shoulders. He didn't mind it. But we got ready. And by December, we were very, very ready. But the prelude to that is something very exciting. We had got missile boats from Russia. They were heavy. There was no crane in Bombay, so it came to Calcutta. Chinoy Chablani, a company, did it. And luckily, I was the first ship, along with uh, Kauvery and Tir, to tow them. Okay. So we arrived in Vishakapatnam with the tow wires breaking the rough sea and therefore we went to the dockyard and a clever naval architect says we'll give you naval ropes so those naval ropes were used they never broke and all the way to mumbai bombay then they were towed with naval ropes and while we were towing the missile board they had packed food we used to send them on the tow line in plastic bags parathas and alu sabzi okay so the missile boards knew how they can go miles away 
without using their engines. Because if they use their engines, they will limit it to 200 kilometers. And that is why the plans for the war began. You know all about Bangladesh being repressed, East Pakistan being repressed by Pakistan. The armed forces killed people. They killed the Bengali intellectuals. They raped their women. How many children were born without fathers? And therefore, that I will not talk about because everybody knows about it. Eight million Bengalis from Bengal, who Muslims and Hindus, came to West Bengal. And therefore, Mrs. Gandhi went round the world, including to meet Nixon. Kissinger was the Secretary of State and said, please help me. He used foul language and said, what does she think and used a word. That. And therefore, she went to UK. She went to Germany came back to India and said that money we can get a little to look after the 8 million, but there is no option for war. I think she confided that with the chiefs of staff, wonderful people. Marik Shaw acted like a chief of defense staff, which we got many years later because he was chairman, chiefs of staff. Air Chief Marshal Lal was a brilliant pilot. He had headed Indian Airlines, so the brain power to look after. And Admiral Nanda, had been in Karachi in that office. He knew Karachi Manora. So it was a dream team for the government of India. And so that was the prelude to the war. And if you ask me the next question about the war, I shall tell you how the war began and which way we went. Absolutely, sir. So like that you've already spoken about the prelude and the circumstances that uh, stood during those days and we had uh, uh, Manik Shaw with us. What really gave all these men that impetus since you said that we were not really prepared? So what gave us the impetus that okay we can take on a war and we will sure and sure win it? What were the exact emotions running through the veins of the then Jawans? This question can be answered with what we have today. The need for a chief of defense staff. Only one leader can go his soul. Manik Shaw did that and gave them complete freedom to make war plans. Right. The whether they wanted to fight the war, which is a chief's prerogative. But he accepted every and corrected very little. When he, we, Navy said we are going to Karachi, of course the ships were worked up. Eastern Fleet was worked up. A new, sorry, Eastern Fleet was formed under Admiral Krishnan and Fleet Commander Admiral Sarma. You know, both were for Dufferin. They had tremendous experience of Merchant Navy teaching and the Indian Navy. So they were a dream team in Vizag. Admiral Kohli was a Second World War veteran. I mean, young at that time. Admiral Krishnan was Second World War DSC. They had seen war as junior officers. And therefore, they knew Manik Shaw was, of course, Second World War veteran. So if you have had a particular chicken tandoori, you know what it is. They had had the Second World War experience. And so therefore, it was a dream team. Admiral Kamath was seen in South. He did not get much pass. So therefore, the dream team was ready. Admiral Nanda found that if he dictates the war plans, uh, it may get leaked. So he called Admiral Krishnan, gave him five days, his naval assistant, uh, Captain Dougal and the Director of Naval Operations, uh, Comrade Dawson, and said, please make your war plan. Krishnan was a mastermind of AK-40 program of the missile boats, the towing wire uh, rope he understood about. So he said, we can go to Karachi. Oh, that's absolutely went into Nanda's mind, you know. And uh, Nanda gave me a beautiful foreword for my book because it was Nanda's dream to go to Karachi. And here was a plan given by his own Navy. So that is how the plans were made. And you know, war plans are given to the commands. Commands exercise according to the war plans. We were ready. But the war was not coming. And therefore, it is said, and I've tried to correlate it, that Mrs. Gandhi warned the chiefs, war will come on 4th of December. Okay. But she did not do it so emphatic that please be ready. So I think, and some say, she set the news through intelligence, having been Director of Naval Intelligence, 
It's called information warfare. Set the news that attacks have started in East Pakistan. Aircraft are brought down. Kush Bihar, there's attack. Mukti Baini was our navigator. With the Navy, they sank 60,000 tons of Pakistani shipping or shipping coming to Pakistan. So they said she'll declare war on the 4th. Therefore, on third night, Pakistan attacked seven airfields of ours. And those aeroplanes which are not ready at Pathan Court and others went down. But the Navy was ready. The Balanced Air Force was ready. And already the Indian Army has got patrols ahead of the line always. And you know, the guards, one regiment was sent its people. So they knew what is going on. And that is the beginning of the war. We were ready. And Navy was sent the missile boats to Porbandar and gave Admiral Gandhi, the fleet commander, one missile boat and said, if the war comes, you will go and attack Karachi. Okay. The idea was absolutely clear. But unfortunately, the war broke and Mrs. Gandhi at midnight, she was coming in from Calcutta and she came and gave that broadcast. We are at war with Pakistan. The whole Navy and the nation heard it. And I think the nation responded. And therefore, unfortunately, the fleet said that they got seen by an aircraft. So the surprise to go to Karachi was not there. And therefore, East Vikran started bombing airfields. Ghazi thought that Vikrant was off Vishakapatnam. She had mines on board, but Vishakapatnam came in from Andamans. There was no seniority of pilots. All old pilots were called. A senior officer pilot served under the commanding officer of the squadron. And boy, Elise aircraft and Seahawks, along with Air Force, were decimating Dhaka, Chittagong and all their airfields and also in to the riverine places and hitting the army and everything. So the war was on, but something happened that morning. On third evening, the Jamnagar was getting ready because the war had started, but we had night, no night fighting capability with our aircraft, which we have now in plenty. We can fight at night. But 71, our aircraft could not fight at night. So in the ops room, MiG, 21s were to go to East Pakistan, Badin, Drig Road, and remove the radars. Once you remove the radar, interception cannot take place. But there was a person called Wing Commander Don Conquest, who was commanding the operational con conversion unit, the best pilots converting officers in hunters. He had earlier told Naval at uh, Army uh, Air Headquarters when Admiral Nanda said to them, very secretly, I have got permission from Mrs. Gandhi to go to Karachi, give me one strike. And in the meeting, General Manik Shaw had told uh, Air Chief Marshal Lal, yeah, ik, give one strike. In Punjabi, they used to talk, chota pra, <laughs> ik strike mang rea. But Nanda said, sorry, my hunters cannot reach Karachi and come back safely until Drig Road radar and Badin radar are not removed. I am not confident of sending aircraft. But that evening, Wing Commander Don Kurtquist, who had actually replied that I'm not ready, found he had new drop tanks okay. for the hunters. He could go to Karachi, fly high, low, attack, and come back high with drop tanks, but therefore no rockets. But front gun attack he could do. So he was told, you have no job. So he said, I'm the four best pilots here at the station. I've got hunters which can go. So they rang up. Uh, Pete Wilson was the commanding officer, Air Commodore. He rang up uh, Air Headquarters Office Room. Okay. Can I send my hunters to Karachi as was planned earlier? They said, sorry, we are very busy planning for tomorrow morning. 240 sorties were being planned. Like Navy was busy. Everybody was busy. <laughs> Do what you want. So hunters that morning went. They went over to Karachi. They had only maps of Karachi, uh, tourist maps of Karachi. Okay. But suddenly, his number two, 
wing commander, then Flight Lieutenant Gupta, saw silver tanks shining in the signing sun from the east. So he said, leader, go for the tanks. They went and attacked the tanks. Unfortunately, uh, they came back. <clears throat> but Jaisalmer they were needed. So they had to rush. They were given pajama, toothpaste. Here at quarter saying, where are the hunters? They said, to, what do you mean going to Karachi? Army is in trouble in the Battle of Basantar, a controversial battle. And so they flew and Air Force does not disclose kill or success till they see the film. So the film was in the hunters. There was no time to take it out. It got mixed up with the film in uh, Jaisalmer. Later, it was found out, certain air marshals helped me a lot to get the footage and the logbooks. Okay. Therefore, Admiral Kohli was upset. And luckily, I was in the ops room in Bombay. Daytime, we were getting Nilgiri ready for the war. Night, Admiral Madhavendra Singh, who was the Lieutenant Commander, junior to me, we were on Nilgiri. Two of us used to keep watch in the evening in the ops room. And in the ops room, there were messages coming. Where is the fleet? Radio silence reported. We didn't know where the fleet was. He was upset that Mysore, Flag Captain Gandhi uh, and uh, the Fleet Commander Admiral Kurvela had not gone to Karachi. At midnight, Mrs. Gandhi said, we are at war. The war plan said, go to Karachi. Therefore, he ordered Op Trident to Admiral Cody. And the missile boats were there in Porbandar, one coming up. They were fueled. Admiral Basin, who had trained, Lieutenant Basin, who had trained in, in the thing, went and set up a tactical position and checked the missiles. Very difficult missiles. You had to put the liquid fuel, the burner, check the Rangut radars, and then said everything okay. And Admiral Basin, who later made the nuclear submarine, actually went and kissed the missile, tested them and said, go and send it to the enemy. Okay. Operation Trident. Fourth morning, Air Force attack. Fourth night, Indian Navy sunk three ships Great. and one merchant ship. And who are they? Commander Babru Yadav was commanding. There was a Lieutenant Commander Kavina. Uh, there was Sharma. Uh, there was O.P. Mehta and Ajay Sharma. Great. And they were there and Kiltan was leading them. And they went in right 40 miles from Karachi. Shah Jahan, Tagmur, Muhafiz sunk merchant ship hit and they were going to come back. But Kiltan didn't get the message withdraw. So it saw one missile going, the last one, OP Mehta. All got Veer Chakra. These two, Kiltan, commanding officer, Gopal Rao, and of course, uh, Babru Yadav Mahavir Chakra. They came back. And one missile boat, the oil was leaking in the engine. But Lieutenant Commander Puri, his name remains in my mind, held Bota, that is a strong cloth we have in the Navy, no. with which we use strong cloth, on the engine so that oil does not leak. His hands were burning, but he was coming back to Karachi. What happened in Pakistan? The air chief, those days, the air at, naval headquarters of Pakistan was in Rawalpindi. Correct. So he rang them up and said, quickly give me aircraft, these missile, these boats. They didn't realize this while some reported it is a thing because in the morning they had seen air attack, confusion, what it is. When they found their targets moving back to India on the radar, he rang up their chief and said, help me. If you give me aircraft, I can sink these. And you know what he said? Old chap, I'm busy attacking targets on land in war that happens. You see? And they got a reception. And of course, uh, 4th of December will go down as Navy Day. 4th of December will go down in the annals of Indian naval history. 4th of December has already gone down in the na na um, annals of world history. Correct. Attack on land and sea. Because on 8th, Lieutenant Commander Jarath, Veer Chakra, with Talwar, which had Colonel uh, Nair, sorry, Trishul, uh, uh, Captain Nair, and Talwar, Commander Kumar, Veer Chakra, all of them, were going to Karachi alone with one missile boat. 
but they realized jerath realized that the missile that was sent to karachi by the last op beta fell on the beach because a missile has got a radar which opens left to right and the biggest target it goes after three locks on so it had locked on to the beach because it took off from op beta's missile boat right. and when it saw the beach there was radar signal so it dived so he put a gate and before karachi it's in his book 25 missile squadron before karachi he told talwar tishul keep clear they were escorting him okay. i am firing my first missile and he fired straight to the oil tanks in kemari so I have, in my book i've written i interviewed baba shell they said we had just put the fire out on the fourth what happened it again the fire started <laughs> there they claim it was also help anyway so it was history but up python again went down in the history of navy that gave impetus for the future of the indian navy today and that is the salt with which i'm talking that after that i served nilgiri got ready we tried to go to the war but i'm very lucky that i was in the ops room on early morning on 5th of december maybe late night 4th as the duty lieutenant commander which was duty commander so i had my shorts and i put on a shirt and i said let's get few hours of sleep okay. and suddenly a exclusive message comes which only officers can decode angad angad what does it mean so i rang up comrade thapar the chief of staff and he heard angad he said ring up cnc admiral kohli i said me lieutenant commander ring up admiral kohli when i have told you you should ring up no no so i rang up admiral kohli's residence the steward said admiral said zaruri hai to uthana wake me up if it is urgent but something told me wake up as if we call this in the navy i'll get a bottle you know you will get a firing wake up so i said sir I'm sorry sir disturbing you but there's a message uh, angad bang he put the phone i said what the hell nobody seems to know anyway nothing i tried to go down to ride down admiral kohli in pajama kurta went into his staff car arrived in the ops room happy man Angad means we had hit Karachi. Okay. So I hope you understand that it was courage of Admiral Gandhi, the courage of Admiral Kohli to after Ad, the fleet did not go to tell Trident go, and he became Chief of Naval Staff Admiral Kohli later. So I'm very happy to tell you this, and of course you must know what happened in the East. Gazi, in fact, the history of the Pakistan Navy quotes me. because i have said either a mine hitter or because there were depth charges being thrown by rajput and abey if i remember correctly they were thinking there's a submarine maybe they got contact they knew gazi is there some messages had told them so they were dropping depth charges okay. it's like you fire in the air and scare okay. so something happened in gazi either they got the scared went deep and a mine exploded or they were charging their batteries which happened on sindhu rakshak in bombay much later hydrogen comes out and if there's a little spark in a submarine there'll be a fire and explosion which happened on sindhu rakshak so my conjecture is and pakistan navy also that gazi was sunk because of indian navy's depth charges they were cornered and you know what happened in the morning two fishermen Santapalli and Lakshman found a life boy of Gazi. They went to the headquarters and said, "We have found this. You know what they got? Two hundred rupees each." <laughs> Then people reported they saw a spark, a fire from the coast battery in Vishakhapatnam, and of course these messages started coming in. But Admiral Krishnan, in his excitement, rang up Eastern Naval Command General Jacob, who fought the Eastern War. and said we've got gazi now we when you're a senior officer if you don't immediately believe another till he gives proof so he said no 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 so he said keep then we rang up naval headquarters after fifth or sixth we've got gazi but at the uh, krishna uh, nanda said unless you give me proof what do i get 
So divers went and okay. got Ghazi. There are some photographs here in my museum here. And what they got, and the menu card, the last letters of people, uh, a wheel, life boy, and this. Lieutenant Commander Nagrani, I think on seventh night, we don't fly as Lieutenant Commanders those days, flown to Delhi on 8th, was it? Yes, 8th, 9th. It was announced in Parliament by Mr. Jagjeevan Ram. And do you know what? Thumping on the tables in the Parliament, it is reported, went on for four minutes. The Speaker could not control the Parliament because by then we were winning. But always when victory comes, sadness also comes. PNS Hangor was a Daphne submarine, very modern. She saw the Kukri class operating off Bombay because there were reports there's submarine there. Unfortunately, she tracked and went silently. My reckoning, which I have researched, that when there is nine o'clock news on All India Radio, it is broadcast in the ship. So around nine o'clock, sailors were quite busy. What's happening in the war? You've got it. That because we did not have any other much information. And therefore, there was a little, well, let's not say full attention. And a torpedo was fired on Kirpan. But Kirpan took fantastic avoiding action, full speed zigzag and went away. Now, Commander Tasneem, who later became Vice Admiral, and I met him in Delhi. He became Vice Chief of Naval Staff of Pakistan. I worked for a company where he was American company. He was the agent. So we discussed this in detail. And therefore, what he did, he found Kukri. Now, Kukri was not doing high speed. Because Lieutenant Jain had made a sonar enhancer in the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Okay. Tata paid for it. So it was fitted in Captain Mullah's ship to test it, that it will catch submarines faster. So high speed was not allowed because he was doing, you know, it's a trial. So he was lucky he found it. And then by the time Kukri got the sonar indication, bang! Now, Kirpan, whether the avoiding action was good or the torpedo went deep, those days you have. Today's torpedo will find you without depth. The precision yeah, is there. Yeah. You're right. You have to set the depth. And it got Kukri, 176 officers and sailors. I've written a poetry for them, went down. I wrote the poetry because 10 of those survivors arrived on my ship. I was executive officer of Nilgiri. And everybody said to me, I got their stories. Everybody said to me, Kismat kharab hai, kukri ke sailor aai hai. I was also saying, you know, India, we have this omen business all over the world. Okay. But I was very upset. How can my sailors talk like that? They didn't have full uniforms. They were being kitted up, but they were good sailors. They wanted to take revenge on Pakistan. So anyway, I cleared low decks and said, and I had consulted captain, and I said, you know, they are experienced who have seen a sinking. Talk to them, learn from them, Nilgiri will never sink. The mood changed. They welcomed them. Kya hua? Kya hua? Bhagne, your life jacket, your life jacket. You know, <laughs> and it was wonderful. And Admiral Nanda made that famous signal. Captain Mullah went down with Kukri. But he made a signal. No captain is, because that's a Royal Navy tradition. No captain is to go down. Because he is an experienced captain. He must try to save his ship. Otherwise, come back to serve the Navy again. Well, that's a, you know, Izzat ki baat hai. And therefore, uh, 14 days, thanks to the Mukti Bahani action in the East, thanks to Vikrant's actions, Thanks to Roy Chaudhary and Martis and others who joined as Mukti Bhaini in Calcutta, got trained well before the war. Thanks to Center 22, which was in Chakrata, they did action all over into the Pakistan Army. Navy went into their naval bases. 
Bangladeshis are very good swimmers. They go to rivers everywhere. So they trained them. Captain Samant, Mahavir Chakra, I think. Operation X, a book has been written by Unnitan. So I have tried to encapsulate that by that time, twice Soviet Union had vetoed the ceasefire. But they said we cannot veto the ceasefire anymore. And therefore, it's our good luck that the Air Force helped the army to cross the Meghna River, one of the most famous, I think there's a picture of that in my uh, museum. The Meghna crossing by Indian Air Force, Mi-8 helicopters, a full regiment was transferred, they went to Dhaka. And before that, the Air Force had a strike in the governor's house where Niazi and commander and the governor general were there. So they had to surrender, which Field Marshal Manik Shaw, later Field Marshal, and General Jacob, it's all written about in my book too. But the ceasefire took place. I think 87,000 prisoners of war were taken, naval prisoners of war. We treated them as per the Geneva Conventions. And of course, it was returned at the Simla Agreement in 1972, which goes down in the annals of history as a little mistake made by India. Because in war, you cannot trust an enemy. Right. In the spoils of war, you cannot trust an enemy. And that is a lesson we should learn for the future. But as I've told you, there are enough lessons for the new generation of Indian officers in the Navy, now women in the Navy, who are performing very well, and for the support system of the Navy, the families of the officers and men of the Navy, that that is the Navy handed over to you by an older generation. They are taking it to great heights on a shoestring budget because the maritime world will be very, very important. So if there's anything I've missed out in my kaleidoscope explanation, because having written two books, I live with it and I look for new material. Even if you find something new or anybody finds new, I would be very happy to incorporate it into my new book, Indian Navy at 75 encouraged by a former chief of naval staff to write a pictorial book of the Navy. People do not read much. They see YouTube, they see television, uh, they want short articles. And therefore, for future generations of students, lovers of India and maritime world, my idea. And that was the war, a war we won. So, so that you have narrated the entire tale of what happened. Uh, I remember the incident taking place where the Pakistani Air Force started bombarding the air bases which were already vacated as we knew that this is the best in the potential that it could do and also some confusion that went in their op room and uh, they misinterpreted their own vessel to be an Indian naval ship a missile boat and then I think they blew up their own frigate. What was the entire scenario then and you know how did they carried out this operation? Well, a question which will show you, Pakistan had not seen a missile attack the, the world except for one little Israeli attack. Nobody knew that a missile can come from 30 miles away Correct. and come. So when the radar started seeing something moving at a, such a high speed, it cannot be a ship. They saw the target and there's no time to react. Mm -hmm. So they thought it is an air attack a low-flying aircraft coming in for a bombing attack. But it was a missile. And I've explained to you, the missile does not miss. Right. Today we have the Brahmos, a missile dare not miss. Recently, one of our Brahmos went all the way into another country. So it dare not miss. So they thought in the operations room, so they were doing their gunfire, duck, 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 duck. And you know, as if it is an aircraft. But this missile was diving into them. You know, this missile, when it gets a target, does lock on. So you are absolutely right. In the operations room, somewhere where I've been many times, even in an exercise or on the operations of the ship, uh, there is what to call the fog of war. Okay. You are not sure of what is happening. So on the uh, fourth, of course, the how did we come? I confirmed that the Air Force attacked. There was supposed to be a passing out parade in the Naval Academy of Karachi. 
Okay. Yes. And you know, the president was supposed to come. But then the third attack took place. The president was not going. But the commander of the academy, I later became the commander of our academy, was actually courageous. He said the passing out parade go, has to go on because the cadets and sub lieutenants saying, we want to take part in the war. If we don't have the passing out parade, and there were Saudi and Iraqi officers. Unfortunately, in India, we didn't come to know because on 4th, BBC reported there is fire in the Kemari tanks. Mm -hmm. And therefore, Admiral Kohli and all said, Angad ho gaya, our missile boats have sunk ships, so they must have hit Kemari. Mm -hmm. And Air Chief Marshal Lal was a fantastic man. When he heard this, that you, we've gone, no film to be shown, leave it. War is going on, don't argue who hit. I mean, that will be a very, very crazy thing if Navy and Air Force in war were fighting who went to Kemari. So later, of course, I uh, found that. I that yeah, when I told Admiral Nanda my finding, uh, he said, just wait for some time to write. He is writing a book. He's written a book. He has not claimed that on 4th, land attack. Yeah, The man who bombed Karachi, he did. He did. But they came. So we know about it now. It's confirmed. Officers are there. But Python, of course, was followed by Commodore Curly Dyer and uh, uh, Commander uh, Talwa Captain Kumar. And they sank a submarine, a Gulf Gulfstar merchant ship. They sank uh, another. Dhaka was hit very, very badly. People were in the water crying for help, etc. So, yes, you're right that there was confusion in the operations room, which will happen in fog of war. Uh, it's happening these days in Ukraine. You don't know what is going to happen with Correct. missile attacks. It it's, uh, comes from nowhere at supersonic speed, Brahmos. And now they're trying to find defense against super missiles. So Indian Navy set people thinking how to save yourself from missile. You know, flares, uh, chaff, whatever you can bloom around your ship so that the missile or behind your ship, so the missile goes behind your ship and hits the bloom and you are safe. But those days, <laughs> there was no bloom and there was no chaff. Right. And how did the uh, Pakistani Air Force or the Navy, how did they came to a conclusion that the vessels which are returning, which actually was the frigate, how did they, you know, uh, got this confusion and they blew up their own frigate? Like, no, see, uh, they could not attack at sea. Uh, therefore, we had very little attack from the Air Force at sea. Uh, Vikrant was in the east, but the Seahawks and the Elises were so powerful, you dare not touch any ship. Admiral Avati, well, okay, well, the Captain Avati, Ramdas, both Veer Chakra were there. Lieutenant Commander Roy Chaudhary, Veer Chakra, Martist, Lieutenant Commander under Samant in that force going up to Kulna. Because they were hitting, they were hitting. And let me tell you a little quick story. Lieutenant Aku Roy was a pilot in the Elise. He had uh, injured his knees. He was off flying, but he was brought in for the war. And uh, sorry, he couldn't take part in the war. But he went to Bangladesh with Mukti Bahini. And he was a Bengali. He kept a beard. He behaved as a Muslim and he was Mukti Bahini. He came back to India, Kuch Bihar. Okay. And the JCO caught him and thrashed him and said, oh. you, you are a Mukti Bhaini, you are a Bangladeshi Muslim. He said, no, I'm Hindu. He said, no, he even took off his lungi to say, I'm a Hindu. But then he didn't say, who is your commanding officer? And I think the commanding officer, Veer Chakra, went, took him to him and he said, I'm from NDA. He said, what do you mean, you're, who are your course mates? I remember he mentioned the name Menezes. This officer was also from uh, NDA. NDA. And Called the JCO, gave him food, gave him link, sent him back. And you know what Navy sent him to fly Elise on the east coast, on the west coast. And he got shot down. We don't know why from a small ship or from an aircraft. He died with Lieutenant Commander Atul. Uh, both of them died. Aku Roy, the story is there in my book. Roy Chaudhary was attacking Kulna. His wife was supposed to give a baby that day or one day before. He said, nothing doing, Khulna. Okay. Unfortunately, they had yellow bunting on their top. The small boats converted to attack boats 
going in to Khulna, Air Force was told there's a thing, yellow flag on top of ships belongs to Mukti Bahini. But that message did not go to Air Force. Okay. Of course, General Jacob said Indian Navy or Mukti Bahini crossed the bomb line. I didn't know much about Army bomb line, but when you have a bomb line, you don't attack anything below the bomb line. He says, but actually it's not true. The message got mixed up in the fog of war and they attack Roy Chaudhary's ship and <laughs> it had to ground and he was then flown, injured to the military hospital in Calcutta where his wife had delivered a baby. Okay. So these are stories which are personal, but they are there. They are there. And uh, so I can share them with you since you asked for it. And what was your experience when you went to Pakistan? Of collecting the information, how, what was the response that you got and your overall experience there? Well, uh, uh, sadly, first time I couldn't go to Pakistan. Having been Director of Naval Intelligence, I was supposed to go for a sailing and a lecture. They said, sorry, you can't go, ISI. Okay. But I did go next time and I did give a little talk in the staff college with few people in the garden because I knew they would record me and they will misinterpret what I said. That's politics. So I said, no, no mics, etc. like I have here. And, so, and we chatted about the war. They conceded. Yes, the Indian Navy was better led, better equipped. And the Indian, uh, the Pakistani Navy was neglected. The army is the tiger in Pakistan. The Air Force is also the second tiger. And this is a poor cub, which now China is helping. To build up. You know, China is helping them with their own maritime interests in Gwadar and uh, uh, Djibouti and Humble Tota for us. So these are big questions which the government is handling. But you asked me when I went to Pakistan, honestly, naval officers, when you meet them, discuss a professional point, they come and talk nitty gritty, but there was no recording of this and neither did I want a recording of what I said. Neither did they want a recording of what they said, but they conceded that yes, Indian Navy was better led, better trained and better performed in the 1971 war, which the country knows about. Right. Navy Day is a great day for us. With all that we have discussed and you have rightly narrated the entire tale, makes me ask, so where do you see or how do you see the Indian Navy in today's time and in the future? Uh, it'll be in my book, Indian Navy at 75. But yes, the way we are going, INS Vikrant has just been handed over, right. taken over by the Navy, and there's a book called, there's a little list called D448, which is handed over saying, I still have to do these. So some flight trials and others will take place, but she's ready. The same day, two MH60R Helicopters were flown, I think, by the C-17 right. into Cochin. And like the Apache, in a few days or weeks, they'll be ready. And 26 of them will be on the latest ships, which did not have new helicopters. They had Seeking, which I operated in the 80s. Can you imagine? 40 years, years ago, technology has zoomed. So I see Indian Navy very well led by officers, the last few trained by my generation and the future generation, even better trained with a fantastic Naval Academy, exposure to the Soviet Navy much more than I had, that got the missiles, exposure to the United States Navy with pedigree of the British Navy. So therefore, without any doubt, we are a maritime nation, the world looks at us, at our maritime abilities, blue economies. We are the net security provider. Government has just increased our budget, which had gone down to 16.5%. Nuclear budget is separate. So I have a feeling the future Indian Navy officers and men and women have a great future with the Indian Navy. For the final questions sir, that you have mentioned about the Naval Aviation, Currently, there's a tough competition within the FA Super Hornet, F-18 Super Hornet and the Rafale M for INS Uttran. Which of these aircraft do you see stealing an edge? Well, 
uh, it's a technical question. I don't think my opinion matters, but I have experience. I'm a controller of aircraft. Right. And therefore, first thing, Indian Navy found ships are not coming. So clever people went to America. They saw the Orion and they saw a new aircraft called P-8 with new equipment. They knew it's a 737 we know all about in India. So they bought the P-8I. Uh, I think 12 of them are flying. They are flying ships. They have uh, torpedoes. Uh, they have a uh, harpoon missile. And therefore, aviation has become very, very important. Now with the Vikrant and the Vikramaditya, the decision for a better than MiG-29K, which may not be able to take the full weapon load all the time, right. in all weather conditions, is being looked at. And I think the most proven aircraft in the world from aircraft carrier flown by the Marines of America, F-18. It's a fabulous piece of machine. Yes, Rafale Air Force is flying very good. But the Rafale on charge de Gaulle still gives them some problem, to my knowledge. And they have converted. The Gripen is trying to convert. So it depends on the money aspect or international relations with countries. This is the battle. And as the Vice Chief of Naval Staff or Chief of Naval Staff has said, the evaluation is taking place. Please trust the Navy. They have always evaluated well right. sonars or Brahmos missile or the command systems, or the GSAT-8, or the Navy. So therefore, I think we should trust the, the Navy. The the and my personal opinion may not matter to anybody. And, uh, thank you very much for your time and considerations. And I wish you all the best of luck with your upcoming book. Probably that would be a really good document that would highly educate the upcoming generation. And uh, thank you to our dear viewers for being such a nice audience. And yes, this was Commodore uh, Ranjit Roy. And this is Ben